In this video, we're going to talk about modeling cam and follower motion using sketch blocks. So on the screen, we have the part file cams open, and we're going to take a look at sketch one. So sketch one contains four separate sketch blocks. We have a cam profile, we have a follower, we have a valve, and we have a fourth block that's actually creating the path for our valve. So there's a line there that's fixed that allows us to create a collinear relationship between a center line of our valve in this center line of the fourth sketch block. So there's some interesting things that we need to cover here, but let's start by taking a look at the motion that we've already created. So if I show the relations, we have a fixed sketch block, we have collinear relation that allows our valve to move up and down. We have a fixed center point for our follower that allows it to float up and down. And we have a coincident center point of our cam that allows it to rotate. When we're creating our cam and follower motion, we can't use standard sketch blocks for our cam profile. We need to use something that's called make path. And the reason we need to do that is because when we create a tangent relation between these two, when this rotates past that arc that we've created that tangent relation to, it needs to follow the next line in the segment. And as it goes past that, it needs to follow this next arc and so on. So it's important that SOLIDWORKS knows that this is in a continuous path. So for instance, if we take this guy over here and we simply make a sketch block out of it, let's drag him over, snap him to the center point, and let's apply a tangent relation between that end and the follower. So once we rotate past that end, you can see things go a little bit crazy. It's not following the rest of that cam profile. And that's not what we want. So in order to make that, let's go ahead and move this back over to the left. In order to make this guy a path, the first thing you want to do, or it's not necessarily needed, but the first thing I like to do is create a block. If you don't create a block, you need to make sure that this thing is fully dimensioned except for its center point location. And you want to really avoid any relations like vertical, horizontal, that are going to fix its rotation in space. So it's always easier to define these as sketch blocks. Once you've created this sketch block, you wanna double click on it. So now that we're editing this sketch block, you wanna go up to your tools menu, down to sketch tools, and over to make path. Inside the make path selected entities, you wanna grab each of the sketch entities that are creating your cam profile. Once you hit okay, you can exit and go back out to your sketch block. So now if we bring this guy over, Let's go ahead and locate them on the center. And let's create that tangent relation here. So now when we rotate past that edge, you can see that our follower is following that next edge on the path. Now, mechanically, it's locked at this point, so it can't go any farther. But it is following that geometry there. Let's go ahead and move this back out of the way. Let's create that tangent relation between our smaller cam follower. So you can see we've got the appropriate motion here. So all we need to do on this end is create a tangent relation between the end here. Now you'll notice that there are some different relations that pop up when you're dealing with sketch blocks. We have an engage blocks option here, and this is something we'll cover in a later lesson. But it's important to note that there are several relations that pop up only dealing with sketch blocks. So in this case, let's add that tangent relation. So now when we rotate our cam profile around, we can take a look at the valve motion. This is a great way to get things like the throw of the valve, how long it's gonna be. You can deal with your cam profiles. And something that, again, we'll cover in a later lesson is doing motion studies. You can actually take a motion study and apply a load to this or a motor and take a look at if your valve actually is getting valve flow. So you can determine the springs that you need based on your sketch box without ever creating solid geometry. That concludes the video on creating cam and follower motion with sketch blocks.